The fascinating thing that I've always found about physics is that it studies collections of objects and what they do together, like water can suddenly freeze or water can boil. Now, that's really interesting and you think that that has nothing to do with people other than that people are studying it. But people are like particles. People get together on a road, they form traffic jams, which is like something solidifying. They um, get together into groups, which is very much like particles do. And so the question arises, can you ever come up with a kind of mathematics that is like the mathematics used for physics, but describes collections of people? Now, immediately there's the objection, wait a minute, people have free will and people are very different. We're all very different. We're not like particles. But something interesting happens because when we have lots of objects, it doesn't really matter that one or two or three or all of them are individually free will. They, collectively, they will act together as a group and that group has actually some predictability. It's very interesting. If I think of these coins, if I flip a coin, I'll get heads or tails with 50% probability. So the chance of me flipping, say, 10 coins and getting 10 heads is, well, it's just really unlikely. But when it comes to people, the chances of having people all suddenly appear on the road at the same time of the day and cause a traffic jam is actually quite predictable. It's also the same with, for example, stock markets. Stock markets crash and they rise again much quicker and much more often than you'd expect if you were just flipping coins. And so the big question arises is can we describe how people act in groups, say when they're doing extreme things, can we describe that using the same kind of mathematics? And it turns out that we can. Collectively, people behave in quite predictable ways. And one of the things that we've been particularly looking at um, in the last couple of years, and it's now becoming a very important topic, is how people do that online. Online, people are freer. They're not kind of bound by who they live next to or who their immediate friends are in work. They're free to explore. And what you see are patterns, very, very definite patterns appear in a way that you don't actually see in the real world, but they, it happens in the online world. And so the online world, where we do worry about what people do collectively, we do worry about extreme groups, that's where the mathematics can actually be more powerful. And that's what we've been looking at.